and welcome to the PHNX Cardinals podcast presented to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcast. I'm Johnny Venerable, Saul Bookman, Frank Sanders. Cardinals lose, what, their eighth straight at home at State Farm Stadium. They haven't beaten the LA Rams or the St. Louis Rams in State Farm Stadium since 2014. Now 11-1, Saul Bookman against Sean McVay. Initial thoughts and reactions from today. Or 1-11 in against you. 1-11, yes. Yeah, not 11-1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely not 11-1. No. Uh, you know, listen, we, we, we're going to take this down a lot of different avenues. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, I my score prediction was 34-16. Um, I feel like if the Cardinals would have started off the game, first of all, with not being scripted or whatever, and just four straight drives that were just three and outs and just awful – then, uh, you know, I think they would have had a little bit more momentum to start the game. And I, I honestly felt like they were they were better offensively than the, than the Rams were. The Rams were better offensively in the first half. And then they had two drives in the second half that kind of try, almost put the game away, but yeah. not quite. It was still within reach, though. And yeah. the Cardinals drove the field just fine. They just couldn't put up sevens. They put up threes, and you can't do that against the Rams. Yeah, we've got people in the chat, Frank, saying, uh, <coughs> Jose in particular, play calls highly questionable, first and goal, and third and goal line situation, run the football. Is it more or less that the Cardinals are missing so many weapons offensively? It, was it more of what the Rams were doing? I mean, it looked like they just had they just missed opportunities. Yeah. I mean, we had Kyler made a perfect throw to Zach Hurts in the, in the, right in that little corner pocket of the end zone, and he went through his hands. Uh, you you could look at some of the play calling. I said it got a little too cute down at the uh, down in the red zone area. Um, it's all right. You can't walk away with threes versus this team. You got to get sevens. Um, we know that the Sean McVay offense and his ability to move that ball down the field, Matthew Stafford now being his quarterback, just, you know, these guys have an opportunity to make plays. And um, it was not pretty. If you want to look at the football game from from the one real true perspective, at the offensive line and the defensive line, the Rams absolutely just won. Yeah. Off the offensive line, the Rams won versus mm -hmm. our defensive line, and their defense beat you know just won against our offensive line, and that's you know that you can't win in that in that position. Thank God we got Kyle who has legs who can kind of move the pocket a little bit. Um, and again, the second part about it is just guys just didn't come up with plays. They didn't make the plays they needed to make um, either to keep the drives going or when they had when they had the opportunity to kind of capitalize on some situations. Uh, they didn't get it done, and um, that was, uh, you know, my take on the game. Well, I, it's frustrating, too, because you envision this receiving court at the beginning of the year. It's not what it is now, and we can say what we want about A.J. Green. He had to be removed from the game with a knee. We don't have an update on his status yet, but when he was playing, he was not helping this football team. Rondell Moore was going to be your wide receiver two or three. He's nowhere to be found as, you know, an injured player with a hamstring. So you look at the box score, and it's like you're reliant on Marquise Hollywood Brown, who was sensational. Greg Dorch, who was not in your plan who looks the part, and then there's a drop-off, right? I thought the older players in particular, Saul Bookman, we talked about this on our halftime show, James Conner, Zach Ertz, and, of course, A.J. Green kind of let the team down today. I mean, multiple drop passes by uh, Zach Ertz alone. Yeah. One in the end zone, one in the red zone. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, can't make those, you can't make those plays and expect to win. Yeah. Like, you, you can't have that happen. And then A.J. Green, I, again, I, I – Questioned why he even came back in the first place. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't see any need for him, especially when you have guys like Greg Dortch. Yeah. Like now that you have Greg Dortch, what what do you need? What do you need AJ? You Green need for? bodies until uh, sure, people come sure. Back. You need you need a little bit. I mean, height is good too. Because yeah. mm -hmm. there was at one point where I was like, look at this, this this receiving core. Every single guy on this field right now is under six foot. Yeah. Um, except for I think it was AJ Green at the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and James Conner again. Like James Conner's never been like. You know, a phenomenal, you know, from goal line to goal line back. He's been fantastic um, in the in the twenties. Yeah. But when you're talking about between the twenties, it's 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 been it, this offensive line, like Frank pointed out, was manhandled by by this Rams team. Yeah. Who manhandles a lot of teams, mm -hmm. not just us. But and, and that's where we keep losing this, and that's why the streak continues. Mm -hmm. Because when you have the ability to step back, take your time, and pass, then you know you, everything's up to your disposal. And I will say this: there's there's a couple key plays in this game. This is why I know there might be a lot of fans that are upset right now. Yeah. But 
I don't feel as angry about this because I know we we legitimately had the opportunities to win this game and we could have pulled this out easily. It's not like week one where it, we just got obliterated. We I mean you could you could sit there and wish and dream. You, yeah. you could wish and dream that oh if this would have happened and this would no 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 this horrible. legit was I mean the Cardinals are down by four. They have an opportunity to get off the field. It's it's third and long. Zayvon Collins fucking whiffs. Yeah, and then Very they true. go down, and that's Very that. True. And they score. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. And like those are the plays that championship level teams make. Yeah. Yep. And it's so basic and fundamental. You go to the upfield shoulder, and he just whiffed it, and that's it. You know, yep. Zach Ertz in the back of the end zone, and instead of getting seven, you have to settle for three yep. at the end of the first half. Like those are the key plays right there that you need to come through on. And typically, at least for Zach Ertz, he did. Does come down with those right. plays. Zayvon Collins is you when know. you play the LA Rams, the Super Bowl champion, and a top one to three head coach in the NFL, Sean McVay. You can't have mistakes like that, especially when you're not dealing with a full deck offensively. You can do that against the Raiders and you know fraudulent Josh McDaniels because they're the Raiders and they're 0 three. Maybe you can get away with that and win next week at Carolina. But if you want to play in the big boy football of the NFC, the upper echelon with the Green Bay's and company. You have to be perfect, and especially without DeAndre Hopkins. We always knew Frank Sanders. These first six games without D-Hop were going to be very difficult. I'm a little bit disappointed, though, and they talked about on the telecast, like, where were the creative play calls by Cliff Kingsbury with Kyler Murray using his legs, the rollouts, the boots, that kind of thing. Instead, it was like he's throwing the ball over 50 times, and last week they had success running the football with him. It's crazy, man, how you watch from week to week how things change, and I think that – uh, something about McVay has and, and him and his relationship either with Cliff or when they're looking at the other side across the sidelines it just McVay has his number in some kind of way and he just does not put together a, an exceptional game plan that rivals what McVay's doing versus us and I think that that's that becomes very that's that's very tall that, that tells you exactly what's going on when you're watching the football game everyone can say that there was a lot of cute plays that he came up with but it just was not enough to work versus what McVay was doing and, I, and that's, it's a sad thing to watch because he's our coach yeah and our coach for another what five or six years yeah that we have to we have to believe in him that he's going to make some adjustments um not having all our weapons does affect how you call plays but I agree with you Saul we had chances to win this ball game and it just wasn't there and I don't think that I think that the guys just they didn't they didn't meet the first half of the game. They didn't they didn't come ready to play with that fight. Like again, you're 0 and 8, you you're 0 and 7. You know with a rival game coming in your house, it's balls to the walls. It's 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 grimy. It's going to get dirty. It's it's going to come down to the last last drive and it should come down to the last drive. And you have to be on your P's and Q's. You can't make mistakes. And if you do make mistakes, you got to overcome that with excellent play as we as the game gets as the game goes on. And we just didn't see that with this team. I, I would say this. There was a comment earlier in the chat. I think it was by Gilbert Arbio, um, who uh, said way too many screen passes. And this is a perfect example of good coach, bad coach, or good coach, poor coach, whatever, however you want to say it. Uh, I, I, I bet, I bet if we look at the stats, the Rams ran just as many screen passes as we did. Yeah, and they were ripping them 10, 15 yards a pop. Yep. We were ripping them for three to four yards, maybe. Yeah. Like, there's a big difference, and that big difference is Sean McFucking Vay. Yeah. He's a good, he's a great coach. Yeah. He's already a great coach. He's one of the best of all time already yeah. in such a young, you know, age. Cliff isn't on that level. No. He, it's okay to say that. Yeah. There's not a lot of guys that are, but what Cliff has got to learn is that he's got to do better in terms of schematically getting his players in position to succeed. I, I, th I thought. For my taste, I thought that the Cardinals did an okay job of trying to mix it up. Um, listen, they connect on that deep route to Hollywood Brown. That's a, that's seven right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And so we could sit here and say, okay, well, he had 15 catches for less than seven yards uh, a pop. Yeah, but there was also one that was down the field that should have been. The, the, the fade route to Andy Isabella, who doesn't know his fucking routes at all and uh. just stops all of a sudden. Then he looks up and he sees the ball flying over his head. And as soon as it happened... As soon as it happened, I was like, what is Andy doing stopping? No. Like, Kyler sees well, the goal. And, and that, yeah. to, to me, that's part of he has no business playing, but he has he's no playing business as playing. out of necessity. AJ, AJ Green really shouldn't have a role, but you have to trot him out there. I mean, Cardinals have a receiving problem right now, and you get Antoine Wesley back hopefully in two weeks after the Carolina game. Rondell Moore, who the hell knows with Rondell Moore? You can't count on him anyway. Like, it's frustrating because, like, 
They drafted the tight end, a receiving tight end in the second round. No targets. No targets no yet targets, again. For, no plays, no nothing. Nothing. And it's just like, hey, Cliff, what we're doing offensively right now, it's not working. Last week, you guys pulled that out of your ass because Kyler Murray played hero ball running around. You got there's no, I, There's no semblance of an offense right now, Frank, with any kind of consistency. And when the offensive line plays like this today and you can't run the football and you can't get a push up front, the receivers aren't there. It's tough, man. When you're watching our offense line just get beat up and you're watching Aaron Donald in the backfield all day and these guys are putting pressure on Kyler. And of course, we see Kyler. Kyler understands the what Aaron Donald's his nemesis. He knows that that this guy is oh, just yeah. a beast. Oh, yeah. And he's not taking anything for granted. He knows for a fact where where we where where he's at and how he needs to move in the pocket. It's unfortunate that our offensive line did not show up today to, to uh, versus just caliber of team. This would be the next jump for the Arizona Cardinals. If they would have done extremely well today versus this defensive line, they would they would they would, it would it would have been a, it would have been a great feeling in the locker room of accomplishment of what it meant to them beating the Super Bowl champions. But not only that, man, being in a, you know a, 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 a rival that you that you play I, twice twice the out of the year. I just feel like and we can say this about a lot of teams like Donald and what the Rams love to do is just not a good matchup for Kyler and, and Cliff Kingsbury. Like you can make an argument Cliff, they, it's a finesse kind of game, right? They throw the ball around, they have a bunch of wide receivers, and they have an undersized quarterback, and Donald just eats from the interior. Like, Kyler can handle edge pressure, right? He can run around like he did against the Raiders, who have two bookend pass rushers. But when Donald can get in Kyler Murray's face, like, and I don't I don't want to say Kyler played poorly today. He had a bunch of drop passes, but he just can't ever really get into a rhythm. What's well, the reason why the Rams have problems with the 49ers and the Seahawks most years? Yeah. Well, maybe probably not this year, but um, it's because they can match that level of physicality yeah. at yep. the, at, on the defensive and offensive line. Cardinals and they, can. And they have been for years. The Cardinals right. have been trying to, you know, uh, they've been trying to jerry-rig their offensive and defensive lines Correct. and yep. put these little pieces in there instead of developing from the bottom up, um, which, you know, development is not their strong suit either. Like no. you can't draft, you can't develop. Uh, so you got to. So you have to take flyers on some of these veterans and hope that they can, you know, find the fountain of youth all of a sudden, much like uh, John Abraham back in the day yeah. and and and, and uh, Dwight Freeney. Yeah. And, and so it, it's just. And, and but that was a different coaching staff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. like you could trust Todd Bowles to be mm -hmm. able to. I mean, listen, we're. We, I mentioned this earlier. Dayon Buchanan, Isaiah Simmons. Yep. Not much difference there. As a matter of fact, I would say Isaiah Simmons has more physical, way more talented, feels, is physically more talented mm -hmm. than Deion Buchanan. Right now, Deion Buchanan is a million times better of a linebacker slash star backer slash dollar backer slash I don't give a fuck backer <laughs> that we want to call them today um, than, than Isaiah Simmons. Yeah. And Isaiah Simmons wasn't out there very often he, today. He, he played probably. I'm going to say. I'm going to guess visually. About half the snaps. Maybe not defense. even that much, 30%. And then you see Nick Vigil and Ben Neiman. Getting get, torn up. Oh, my God. This team, and I tweeted this out, like the ripple effects. And I know the defense, I mean, on paper, 20, 20 points given up. They weren't great. They weren't terrible. The offense, I think, was definitely to blame. But the Rams asserted their will when they wanted to. There were plays to be made for the Rams that they didn't make. Cooper Cup drops a touchdown. Stafford missed a couple bombs that were wide open. He hits those. I mean, this game is much, much uglier. But back to Simmons and Isaiah or and uh, Zayvon Collins. Like those back-to-back -back picks. Like we're seeing the ripple effect now, folks. Like second and third-year players that are first-round top twenty, top ten talents are not Pro Bowl level players for you. And you're plugging in Joe Schmo making vet league minimum, you know, Tanner Vallejo and, and Ben Neiman and, you know, Nick Vigil, who's got the worst PFF grade of anybody on this team. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to get exposed for that. Like, the Cardinals drafted those two guys back to back, Simmons and Zayvon Collins, to change games. And as Saul pointed out, the Zayvon Collins miss sack changed the game for the worse. Mm -hmm. Isaiah mm -hmm. Simmons not playing, and you're playing these other guys, and whatever the, whatever riff he's got with, with Vance Joseph changed the game in a negative aspect, Frank Sanders, because you don't use those picks on those guys. Oh. You use them on other players that, that can help you. You want to be helped. Real quick, easy sitting here. We didn't lose because of our O-line. Stop blaming the O-line. Did you watch the O-line today? In the first half. The first half was, uh, was a tragedy, and then there was multiple times in the second half where literally a double team would come towards like Floyd, and he just split them like they weren't even there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then one play, Darren Donald straight up just 
I don't even know what Justin Pugh was doing. Yeah. His hands did not work. And Donald goes right around him in like less than one second. And he's right up in Kyler's face. And you can see it in Kyler's eyes. He's like, oh, fuck. And he just gets rid of the ball, throws it to like Jesus. And he hopes for the best. I don't blame him on that. No, like, dude, either. it's Aaron Donald. He will knock you out of the season yeah. Yeah. if you let him. you got to be careful with Fra that. The O-line was not good today. Yeah, Frank, how do they remedy these offensively? You get Scheme-wise, you got to know exactly what – typically what we would do is we would run the guy who who's the, who's the best guy, like Aaron Donald, we'd run to him or we'd boot away from him. And that way you can kind of give your quarterback some time. You roll away from him. You do play-action pass and, and certain things that will allow you to kind of – protect your guys you, you don't get into a five wide situation ever unless you're running the little dump off screens or some kind of way or you you, you, get, you gotta you gotta design plays man where you're protecting your quarterback who's your asset and getting guys you know, away from the guy who you realize that he's causing you guys the most problems our offensive line was not good today and again we said guys did not they didn't play great um, and a lot of guys on the outside, some of our, our skilled players, did make the plays that we thought they could have on, in some situations. But when you get that much pressure on your quarterback and you're constantly seeing that kind of pressure, it, it affects how you call plays. It affects that you can't call five and five and seven step drop back passes and allow guys to run deep balls right. and 15 yard, 15 to 25 yard routes because you don't have enough time to do that. Yeah. And so that changes that changes that changes everything. So you watch why you just run these dink and dunk passes. It's because your quarterback doesn't have time. You as a coach, you don't feel comfortable because you realize these guys just well, it's, it's too much it's too much pressure taking place. I, I I feel like we've said the same thing for the last correct. three, three and a half years. That is correct. With Cliff. Specifically with Cliff. Um I know Kyler um, you know, is out there. He's trying to ball. I thought he played a really good game today. Yeah. I didn't. He didn't cost his team the game by any stretch of the imagination. Passes. There could have been, uh, you know, a, a few tweaked passes here and there. But I thought overall he was solid. He had control. He 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 didn't feel as rattled. Yep. That That's was the correct. thing, right? The playoff game, he was mm -hmm. rattled. This game, he didn't feel rattled. This is the the kind of I've finally come to a realization today, and I'm going to say it right now. Okay, I haven't said it before. Um, I don't think Cliff is the guy. I don't think Cliff is the guy. And I know a lot of people have already said that multiple times, but um, I've seen enough so to know. So you're dismissing the 11 season last year. Well, I, I just I just don't see the the creative the creativity and the dynamic plays um, on offense and creation of that in order for me to think that there's another level to Cliff Kingsbury. I think he is what he is he at this point. He hit his ceiling. Yeah, I think he is what he is at this moment. You've given him a lot of great tools. And listen, the tune will probably change here in about three weeks when D Hop comes back. Because we were talking about today, like, damn, can you imagine this this team Hollywood when they have and Hollywood and D Hop going and, and Dorch. Dorch in the middle? Like, yeah. holy shit! And, and that for me, like, I like, I'm not the biggest Cliff Kingsbury apologist, but I mean, frankly, this receiving core is embarrassing outside of the top two guys. I mean, there's a steep drop off, and you know, when you're counting on Greg Dorch to be your number two and to be a focal point of your offense. Like things have gone awry, and this team specifically in the offseason pushed all their eggs into the offensive basket, knowing they would take a step back or two, as we've seen to start the season defensively. So, like I, I've been of the mindset: can you can you be a 500 team when DeAndre Hopkins comes back, and can you take off from there and have the reverse effect of what happened last year? Slow start, hanging around, and then take off. You know, ask me again, the end of the season, hell, mid-season, if this team takes off or falls off. But uh, it's 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 unfortunate. I, I wish they were playing with a full deck. They are not. But I want to remind everybody that uh, Four Peaks is the official brewery of PHNX. <laughs> Thank you to all that came out for the Sun Devil tailgate yesterday. Saul Bookman, you were there uh, hanging out. It's a million percent freaking awesome. It was so great. Well, and not only that, but today's tailgate. Oh, man. If you didn't go to the tailgate today at the Lola right before the game, Holy shit. Mm -hmm. That was a good ass time. We had a winging contest. Um, you know, the the four peaks was flying. Mm -hmm. it, it was a great time. We had the, the shot ski going around the the, yeah. the, the, the bar. Uh Frank, you missed out. It was it was a great time today. Damn. Uh, and then on top of that, uh I'm gonna just say this right now. We have another tailgate coming up here in a couple weeks. We do. Uh, against the Eagles. It's gonna be huge. Black helmet night. Black helmet night. And we will have two free tickets to give away to that game Woo! as well. And these two tickets are Money tickets, premium. like premium, like four or five hundred dollar tickets for sure. All right, well, we got Carolina next week, Philly in two weeks, and I want to tell everybody right now you can gamble and dabble 
on the Underdeck Fantasy and pick them. Just look for your favorite or least favorite player stats. Pick between two to five players for your pick them entry and whether or not they're going to hit the higher or low, lower stat total. Get all your picks right. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. Unfortunately, I am on a losing streak, but it's going to turn around. It's going to turn around quick. I took the L to Saul Bookman week one. I don't want to talk about that. It's not going well for me. I haven't been invited back since. Yeah, well, <laughs> we're trying We're trying to get our rep up here on Underdog Fantasy. You can, too. You can search in the App Store. Click on the link in the show notes. Of course, use that promo code PHNX. Get this. Underdog is going to double your deposit up to 100 bucks. You did Deposit 100, you get 200 back. That's Underdog Fantasy. Promo code PHNX and get into the action today. We will be hearing from Bo Brock uh, in a little bit, live from State Farm Stadium after chat with Cliff Kingsbury and company. I want to get to some more of your comments here. Top G in the chat. Nice two worst head coaches. It'll go head-to-head next week. Well, uh, is the tiebreaker the fact that Matt Rule is 2-0 against Cliff Kingsbury? Because I don't want to hear about that. That's unfortunate. What does that mean, Cliff, <laughs> in that scenario? Mark Bagley saying Vance Joseph is weird and, and trash Russ Simmons at QB. Uh, there was a comment earlier, and I agree with it. I think it was from Andrew, uh, who made a good point. I think this is kind of echoes what a lot of Cardinal fans are, are thinking. Just you got to play Isaiah Simmons the rest of the year. You got to play Zayvon Collins the rest of the year. They need to play 90 to 100 percent of the snaps, and you let the chips fall where they may. Nick Vigil, Tanner Vallejo, Ben Neiman. I'm sure they're great guys. They are not a part of this team's future. Yeah. You did not invest premium draft picks in them. Your defense is struggling with them. So why the hell, if you're Vance Joseph, are you married to those players? You have to intervene if you're Steve Kahn. You know, so real quick, Frank. Back in the day, mm-hmm. um, you when the Cowboys came to town. Right, or you would go to Dallas. Um, you could sense that they weren't afraid of you guys, right? Absolutely. Like, you know, and, and and when you don't have that fear, then you have almost like a false bravado, even if the other team is better. Um, and you play, you play with that confidence, and you play with that assuredness, like nothing, nothing's going to go wrong. That's what the Rams right now have against the Cardinals. Would you agree with that? I agree one hundred percent. They they're not fra- they're not fearful of the Cardinals. They know that. Our, we're a one-trick pony, and that's if you get pressure on Kyler, and you can create, you can create just that kind of pressure on Kyler. He's the only reason. He's the only reason why we're in the game, mm-hmm. and so they have, they have that. You saw, you saw them move Jalen Ramsey around in multiple positions from outside cornerback to inside nickel back to a to a rover as a as a linebacker, and he was able to make, make some blitzes on the outside to put pressure on him. Out, as well as Aaron Donald. So you're absolutely right. So when, when we played the Cow- Cowboys, <laughs> we were up 17 zip versus the Cowboys one time here and at Sun Devil Stadium. And it was like the second half, they was like, oh, y'all ready to play now? Y'all, y'all ready to play? Yeah. We lost 24-17. Yeah. And then score again. Like they just knew that they had the answer for anything that we were doing yeah. in the first half. They landed here on Friday. They was in Scottsdale partying it up, drinking it up. Having a great time. Saturday and Sunday. Sunday came. They was dragging around in the first half, and next thing you know, they flipped the switch. Most teams like that, they don't they don't fear you because they understand and they trust the system. A lot of times, you just gotta feel like like the Cardinals. I think they 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 last week gave them the idea that they can pull it out. Yeah. Aeneas Williams said this to me, man, when we was when we was on our run and we were we were on that emotional high of winning games in the last seconds, the cardiac cards, mm-hmm. which got us into the playoffs in 98. Yeah, yeah. He said, man, you cannot keep relying on those emotional wins. Mm-hmm. You have to go out and play fundamental football and dominate your opponent and win games like you're supposed to win football games. Yeah. Just that's what you're supposed to do. The Cardinals have done that. You know, last week they came back from a big win versus the, you know, the Raiders and it was it wasn't a great performance. Another first half mm-hmm. that struggled. Offensively, they were not ready for the punch. That's three in a row, and, and, and you see what I'm saying. And so they couldn't do. They couldn't come back versus Kansas City. That that game was a blowout. Then you watch them. You know what they did with versus the Raiders. They were able to pull something out, or it's as if they the Raiders just shut it down. Like we won. We're the we're the big dogs, and we're not going to call the same place. But when you watch this week, man, it just looked like they were trying to. Yeah. draw that same emotions back to win the second half and it just did not happen. And I think one of the more frustrating things if you're Cardinal fans is that the Rams were missing a bunch of pieces. They had a bunch of guys going IR. They're, they lost their starting center, although you'd never know it. Matthew Stafford was not particularly sharp in this game, did not throw a touchdown, I think, in his first time as an L.A. Ram. And then you think about this pass rush for Arizona, or lack thereof, it was J.J. Watt again with one sack, and that was it. So J.J. Watt leads the team with two sacks through three games, that's it. Nothing for Marcus Golden, who got a new contract. Nothing from your rookies. Of course, nothing from Devon Kennard and company. I think that is one of the biggest problems right now, Saul Bookman, with this team, where last year, and I know it was last year, I don't want to keep going back to it, but you had Chandler Jones and J.J. Watt, and these guys were humming. 
given the defense opportunistic chances to get picks and force fumbles and that kind of thing. And really, like, let's be frank. Buddha had the great play on the goal line. He deserved that play, absolutely. But, I mean, he doesn't have that play. It's like 27 to 9. This game looks a lot worse, and they're on the one-yard line. So, for me, it's like the, the Rams basically did anything they wanted to offensively. I mean, they're consistent. They are consistent, and they're consistent at kicking our ass. Yeah. I mean, again, we're one in eleven in our last twelve against them. Yeah. Like, I, I really thought we had turned a corner last year when we beat them in LA. I felt like we matched their intensity, we matched their bravado, and um, you know, obviously, I was sorely mistaken because that that's just not been the case. Uh, the defensive and offensive lines have gotten, in my opinion, they've gotten significantly worse than they were a year ago. Defensively, absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, I think you just don't have the dudes to be able to create distractions all over the field anymore. And when you when you consistently have to go to the pool of, you know, uh, flyers yeah. and, and hope and wish, that's all you're going to get. Is mm-hmm. You're just going to hope and you're going to wish and you're never going to know what you're about to get or what you're about to do. Um, and then you combat that with the, the draft history that they have had. Um, the fact that Zayvon Collins and, and, um, and Isaiah Simmons have not come through right now. Um, Trey McBride's not playing. What are we doing here? Well, you, the, the best player you've had in the last three or four years besides Kyler Murray yeah. has been an undrafted fucking wide receiver right now and Craig Dorch. It's funny. Brittel 03 makes That's a point. True. I want to get to this. Team has no playmakers at wide receiver, just deep threats. Uh, team, uh, we don't know how to have guys that turn and in plays into something, cover the deep stuff, make us take five to six yards at a time. I thought the Rams did a nice job of that. They basically played off in the second half and said, you can dink and dunk, but you're not getting anything deep. Mm-hmm. And here's what I will say about the no playmakers thing. Like, I, I harp on this continually. This team was counting on Rondell Moore. Now, whether you f- feel that was a stupid decision because he hasn't been healthy since 2018 in Purdue, yes, you can absolutely feel that way. But they thought he was going to explode this year, like eight to 1,200 yards, taking Christian Kirk's role. Kingsbury, we spoke to him at training camp, said Rondell Moore is taking Christian Kirk's spot. And then Rondell Moore severely tore or strained his hamstring the three days before the, the Chiefs game. And so you remove that key element that you invested a top, you know, two draft pick on, and he's gone now, and A.J. Green's a walking corpse out there, and th- this is what you're left with, right? Mm-hmm. And when Zach Ertz is dropping passes and Hollywood gets his, but it's not enough, like, we, sh- I, I am not surprised that the offense is struggling because you're having to use Andy Isabella out of necessity and good hell, that's u- ugly. Andre Bocelli's out there. I mean, Antoine Wesley, Rondell Moore, DeAndre Hopkins. Those are three of your top five receivers. Now, the Trey McBride stuff pisses me off. I have no idea what they're doing. He was the best receiving tight end, I think, outside of uh, Pitts, Kyle Pitts for Atlanta of the like the last three to four drafts. He dominated. Now, he dominated a small level, but again, we saw him at the Combine. You saw him at the Senior Bowl. He can play in the NFL. We watched him at training camp. It is malpractice right now that Trey McBride uh, Frank Sanders is not getting any time with this team when they lack two things, athleticism down the field, when when Ertz, with all due respect, catches the ball and goes down immediately, no mm-hmm. yak, and they have no size. Well, versatility. Vers- yeah, you know, use him as an like, H-back. Yeah. Do something. A, a guy like Trey McBride provides versatility. Mm-hmm. Again, this goes back to my saying that Cliff, I feel like, has hit his peak, and, and there is nothing else there. You know what I mean? Unless he thinks about it all week long on this one specific thing, there's just nothing there. Yeah. You know, they could have used him in several <clears> scenarios <throat> to maybe chip the DN before he went out for a pass. You know what I mean? Like yeah. unlike a wide receiver, but they yeah. didn't. They could have they they could have gone with two tight end sets, but they didn't. Uh, the only times they they ever went with two or more tight ends was near the goal line, and McBride wasn't one of them. You know what I mean? Like you just you have to be better at adjusting to your personnel. And if you have a guy like Trey McBride just sitting on the bench right now, this tells me either you absolutely effed up in your drafting process and you completely overvalued him or you don't know what the fuck you're doing. I don't think they know what to do with him. It's, too, hey, it's, it's one of those two. There is, no, there is nothing well, else in between. The idea is that they know what to do with him. It, he just does not fit our system. 
He doesn't fit Cliff's mentality of four and five wide receivers and, and Kyler in the shotgun. He just doesn't. Like, that's that's not their system. We saw the first play, first first series of the, of the game. Come out in a set, move the ball four yards, come back again, move and get three. Next thing you know, you're third and one. You're trying to figure yeah. out what you're going to do, and you go right back to a spread offense, and you're on spread offense the rest of the day unless you get in the red zone, which is what you're supposed to be doing, but you, you, you just don't have enough. That's not your comfort area. That's not comfortable for you to be in the red zone in ace formation knowing exactly exactly what to do. They just don't know what to do with that. So you want to go back to the draft and say, did they F up or did, did, we, did, did we do the, 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 the laissez-faire conversation that says, well, we just drafted the best player that was on the board at the time. And, and we just, and I think that is, that's, that's a product is, of the cliff which system. Is fine. Just, which is fine. I'm okay with that you, too. You draft the best player, but you got to fucking use you them. You got to use like, them, man. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. This is like the third year in a row yes. we've had a high draft pick <laughs> and we don't use them for shit. Yep. Then get rid of that coach because clearly they don't know what the hell they're or doing. Tra- or trade all your picks, man. Like, man. like Steve Kime, I, I like the Hollywood Brown trade. I think it's working out. I think it's going to work out long term. But you, you had a second and two third round picks. They don't play at all for a team that's one and two. That has to change. I believe it will because... Like, what the hell are you doing investing time and, and valuable snaps as you progress through the season with guys who aren't going to be part of your team? You see why we, we should have, if you know, we were ta- you were talking about how we had pitched the idea of would you trade a second and whatever for mm-hmm. Roquan Smith? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The fuck you would? Well, uh, before, you should. Before Please. the season on this show, when Roquan was Please. pissed off, I floated the idea. Rondell Moore, yeah. when he was healthy, and a couple day two picks, and I got scorched. I'd have, I'd have done that yesterday. And he had yeah. a pick today to seal that game. Uh, we're getting word from Bo Brock. State Farm Stadium, he's talking with Cliff Kingsbury. Rashard Lawrence, Cardinals starting defensive tackle, has a cast on his hand. That is not good news. Maybe go out and sign in Dominican Sue. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals, uh, not great, but what is great? Game time. It's the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. You were checking out game time before the Cardinal game today. Some of the tickets were unbelievably cheap, and uh, you can only get those. Ten bucks today. Unbelievable. Ten bucks today. You could have gotten into the game for $10 using the game time app. Save up to 60% on tickets when you buy last minute. I'm a procrastinator. I would love to be able to go to a Diamondback game last minute. Of course, the Cardinals, Suns right around the corner. You can get it at game time. It's for you procrastinators like there, like myself. If you love PHNX, you're going to love game time. The best way to support us, all you got to do is uh, buy your tickets using the link in the description below. Speaking of below, be sure to smash that like button as we keep this post game rolling. Real What's quick, up? Can I, can yeah. I address something? So Joel Valens went a couple times in the, in, the, in the chat and said, stop buying tickets and going to games. Things will change when the money changes. Okay, well, let's go back to this. The Cardinals first are money. All, first of all, the Cardinals are not like the worst football team in America. Like, they've had a couple, they've had three bad games, but they got saved by a good fourth quarter in overtime, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, but there's no sense in just completely destroying the whole program and revolting against this franchise. <laughs> it's too early for that. It's too early for yeah. that. And like, listen, at the end of the day, for me, yeah. I like to support the people as well as the organization, yes. right? Yes, yes. Um, Cliff is not a bad dude. Like, I, I don't I don't know Steve Kime. I don't I know he's had s- some issues or whatever, Jeez, but yeah. but like I've met a lot of these people. I met a lot of the players. Mm-hmm. Like they're all good people for the most part. Like that's what you want to support. Like now if they were a bunch of just thugs and villains and stuff like that, sure. Yeah. Easy easy in the chat. We played the Super Bowl champions. And I know like they didn't look good against the Bills, but like, first of all, it's a long season. And we is, talked about it after week is. one. Anybody who looked at the Cardinals' schedule and didn't think it was going to be a slog, especially early without DeAndre Hopkins, like, I don't know what Bo to Brock tell you. Bo Brock had him going 0-3, remember, in his right. preseason preview. And then getting to, like, 10 wins. Like, maybe that happens, maybe it doesn't. But here's what I will say. Like, the Cardinals don't have their second-best player. DeAndre Hopkins is unequivocally the team's second-best player right along Kyler Murray. Like, he's going to mm-hmm. make a difference when he comes back. The schedule lightens up a little bit. You get to play the Seahawks. Have you, have you checked them out? They're flipping terrible. You get to play Jimmy Garoppolo twice. Like, this was a gauntlet. You get uh, Patrick Mahomes week one. You have to go to Las Vegas, right, and all their weapons. You win that game. And then today you lost to the team that won the Super Bowl last year. You're one and two. Hey, could it be better? Absolutely. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of this. We were spoiled at the beginning of last year. Like, I hope you guys enjoyed that robust start, 10 and two, right? Probably won't happen this year. But guess what? The Niners last year were terrible and started three and five. And rallying got to the NFC Championship game. We have this is cliche, but I'm gonna say it anyway. And Frank Sanders, you know all about this. Mm-hmm. It's not how you start; 
It's how you finish. 17 games. We got plenty of time. And as long as Kyler Murray, knock on wood, is healthy, this team's going to be in every game. I promise you that. They're going to be competitive. And you can check it out at gophnx.com and the PHNX Cardinals podcast. But Frank Sanders, what does this team have to do to rally next week and take on a Carolina team that just won a game? What what changes do they need to implement? What will happen is they'll... They, they will go back and look at the film and realize what how how they missed opportunities. Like you, <clears throat> you gotta have the deep throw. You gotta make Kyler um, guys that's gotta make catches. You gotta make those catches you're supposed to. Yeah, you can't miss those blocks that you're supposed to make. This we I say this here. I remember one of our coaches that we had um, would would put us would, we would go in on Mondays and he would sit us down and say, Hey, I call these I call these plays in succession because I know exactly what the defensive coordinator is going to do. And if this guy does this and that guy does that, then we, this play works. And he would just he would break down the first seven plays and just show us like he he knew what he was doing it, but one guy might have made a mistake or something like that. They're going to have to minimize their mistakes. They're going to have to fix and you know of course always get healthier so they can come out and play a, at a much higher level. But minimize their mistakes, man, and then realize how to play four quarters of football at a high level. Yeah, and not you know come out ready to fight, not taking the punch and waiting to the second half to try to figure it out. That's that's probably the best thing these guys could learn to do right now, man, is come out. And again, that requires veteran veteran leadership in the locker room, yelling and getting these guys fired up and mentally ready to go out and play, whether that be the coach. We haven't done well at home. We're 0-8 as it stands thus far. That's not good. And you can't – I mean, that that's 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 ugly in itself. Go ahead. I want to get to a comment here because, I, Mark, I agree with you. I, we do respect the chat. Respect your chat team for being frank and honest and – I think it's unacceptable that the Cardinals are this bad at home. And I feel for the people who invest money to go to the games and, you know, bring their kids and bring their families and they get these shitty performances. Like they have not won a home game in almost a year. Like that's unacceptable. If you're Michael Bidwell, whatever, like that has to change. Like no one's disputing that. No one's disputing that Sean McVay is Cliff Kingsbury's daddy or Bruce Arians when he was here. Like they can't beat Sean McVay unequivocally. But like this team dating back to uh, two years ago, 2020, is over 500. So it's it's baby steps, right? Like this this franchise, we have to contextualize it a little bit. Like they're not historically the Packers yet. They're not the Patriots of old. Like they're trying to build a foundation. Right now, they've hit a speed bump, Saul Bookman, but I, I don't think it's enough to just say like, tear it down, fire everybody. That's easy to say, but then what do you do? Like I see people, yeah. you know, I don't think Vance Joseph's good at his job right now. I think he's, it's malpractice what he's doing with young players. You fire Vance Joseph today, like what the fuck are you doing? Like you, got, Billy Davis, is a, he's terrible as a linebacker coach. He's got the most experience to take over. You can't hire him. So in a lot of ways, like you're kind of stuck with Vance Joseph well, for I, this year. I mean, listen, like uh, Vance Joseph held the, the, the Rams to 20 points today. Yeah. Like as much as we might hate, it might, it might not, I hate such a strong word, but not like what he's doing versus what we do like what he's doing. Um, again, like 20 points. And you could sit there and be like, well, if it weren't for the fumble on the goal line, well, yeah. Well, if the defense hadn't broken down and and one player had a missed assignment, usually Zayvon Collins or Isaiah Simmons, then maybe <laughs> something else goes a different way too. Like we could always if, if and or but it, but what, the bottom line is 20 points, giving up only 20 points to the Rams – should get you a W. Yeah. Like, in my opinion. It was, That's it was the defending there. Super Bowl champions. Yeah. I, I don't know. I People, it's so easy to say, overhaul it at every single moment of weakness or every single uh, series of adversity. There's been teams. The Rams, you know, last year didn't start off gangbusters. They weren't hot. They weren't like the best team in the NFL. No. They found their stride at the right time. They ended up winning a Super Bowl. Oh. Hell, the Cardinals. That year, we went nine and seven and got obliterated in New England yeah. in the snow by like fucking fifty points. Yep, and we end up being two minutes and thirty seven seconds away from a Super Bowl championship yeah. that year. Like, you can't just give up so damn fast. I'm not saying it's going to happen this year. Well, I'm not saying Cliff and Kaim are going to find some magic secret sauce here in the second half of the season. But what I will say is, you just never know. And as long as you're consistently giving your team an opportunity to compete, which is what happened today, yeah, we despite had a the loss, you're always going to be there. You're yep. always going to be there. Well, I think what's frustrating for Cardinal fans, too, is like they, they were frustrated with Cliff Kingsbury and Steve Kaim, and then they got extensions. And now it's a lot of the what you see. The extensions did not help. Right. They it's a lot of what you all. saw at the end of last year. <laughs> and it's like, w- w- what did these guys do to deserve this? Did they deserve these lofty extensions? And I would I would probably say they probably should have been year to year. And we, But to Saul's point, Michael Bidwell, 
does not want to turn into the Washington Commanders. They do not want to turn over coaches and quarterbacks and GMs year in and year out. They are staunchly against that. Say what you want about Kime. It's the winningest GM this franchise has ever had. I think they need a fresh start, but I mean, hey, like the, I do the too. Proof, the proof is in the pudding. I, with I do too on both of those accounts. Right. But but what I'm saying is is like we don't need we don't need to sit here in week three or four and say okay we'll scrap the whole thing, cut everybody, trade everybody. Yeah. Because then then we would be the Commanders, then yeah. we would be yeah. the Jags, then we would be the worst the teams Jets. in the NFL. Yeah. Like there has been a consistency here, and you're hoping that everything kind of comes together at a certain point and things start to click to give yourself a chance. But you got to stay in the race and stay in the game until that potentially could happen. The Cardinals will do that this year. They're a good team. They have not played very well, but right. they are a good team. They showed it in the second half of that game last week. They were consistent today in moving the ball, at least after those first four drives. They got over. I, they got into Rams territory on multiple occasions. They should have been able to score a couple touchdowns. They got nothing but field goals. Not ideal, but that doesn't mean that you just burn down I, the house and start from scratch. I think you can take solace into it. The Cardinals have not played their best, and th this is not them playing their best against like the best teams in the league. Like. They will play better than this. We know it, they have better players coming. It's just by default. Like, DeAndre Hopkins is going to be a force for this team, right? We feel like Rondell Moore, if he can ever figure it out, will help them on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And so when you get to play the Seahawks and the Falcons, right, and, you know, goodness, Minnesota looks beatable, you've got games in the second half of your schedule and in the mid middle part where you're going to be able to rack up some victories. We always knew this was going to be a slog early on. They have to just fight through it, Frank Sanders. If they can go three and three before DeAndre Hopkins comes back, so all you have to do theoretically is you got to beat the Carolina Panthers, mm -hmm. right? And you got to beat the Seattle Seahawks. Then you could lose to the Eagles, or you could beat the Eagles, right? You're right back. You're five hundred, and you got D Hop coming back. The guys, I mean, look, <laughs> Kyler's taking another step of leadership. That's going to help because he's going to tell the guys, "Hey, I'm 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 riding with you guys. I did this wrong. We could have did this better. We'll figure this out. We'll get better. We'll we'll move some things around." Again, Kyle didn't run a whole bunch today. He could have ran probably ran a little bit more. Gave himself a little bit. Uh, gave 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 some a little bit more stuff to say. And uh, I think there's I think the veteran leaders will start talking at this time. You know, I agree with you. Let's not let's not throw baby out with the bathwater right now because. Uh, this team has a lot to. This team has a lot of opportunities, man, to prove that they they can turn the corner. It's uh, <laughs> it's just right now. Ever what's that? Hans Sagan said, "Yes, burn it down, Saul." All caps. Like I love you, buddy. I like I I love the passion that we have right now. But what I will say is this: <laughs> like Kime, for as many people do not like what he's done so far, mm -hmm. he ha he has had you know multiple winning seasons. I mean, listen. If you've been alive in the 80s, the 90s, and the early 2000s, you will know how good Steve Kime is. Like, he's a good, he, he was a good GM. Maybe he's been sliding off of late, but they still did get to the playoffs last year. They still won 11 games. Like, it is. Ta it is. Take an OG, right? We got Bo Brock live from State Farm Stadium here in a second, but I just want to remind every right now, we highly recommend you to check out OGs online at ogbrands.com and on Instagram at ogbrands. You can also find their products at your local dispensary. Oh, they the, they're fantastic. That, that midnight blue right now. Do we have any it's, in the studio? By it's the way, a, no, it's a, uh, no. If you would have went to their draft party, which or their their All launch right. party, which you did get invited to, I but you working. refused to go, uh, you would have got some uh, freebies, and I've got multiple freebies. And I've tried Do you have those, any that you can give to me? sleeping edibles. No, okay. I'm keeping them all for myself. No, that's um, are gold. <laughs> okay. I, like you don't hear anything all night. You're just you're out, and yeah. it's it's amazing. They're really great. Bo Brock momentarily State Farm Stadium. He just met with Cliff Kingsbury. Let's get back to more of your comments. Bruce Arians made Kime a good GM, according to Sly. Well, listen. I mean, they they made the playoffs last year without Bruce Arians. I mean, that's that's a real thing that happened. But I I here's what I will say. And Bo, I will give Bo immense credit because he brought this point up. I don't think anybody's ever made this point. Uh, is that Bruce Arians had contact with a lot of those veterans, and then Steve Kime would bring them in. I think that's the disconnect now with Kime time signings is. You know, Bruce Aarons knew John Abraham and Dwight Freedy and Eric Winston got those guys to Arizona. Uh, right now, let's let's get Cliff Kingsbury involved in these in these free agent signings. Let's get Bo Brock involved with the PHNX Cardinals live post game show live from the field at State Farm Stadium. Bo, you had an opportunity to speak with Cliff Kingsbury. What was the mood in the press conference? I mean, there was frustration throughout the locker room. Cliff Kingsbury, same stuff. I mean. Any other Carol, uh, Arizona Cardinals loss, you heard the same rigmarole as far as, you know, we got to be better play callers, got to execute better. Uh, 
so didn't hear anything we haven't heard before, but uh, heard from Kyler Murray, and Kyler Murray was probably the one who's breath of fresh air, a little bit more transparent with the Arizona Cardinals struggles today on offense. Well, I mean, the offense in general, I thought was the biggest reason that they, you know, fumbled a chance to win today. You think about how they started the first quarter, a couple consecutive three and outs. What would you say is the biggest reason that this offense continues to fumble the start to the year? Is it the offensive line? Is it the lack of receiving depth? Is it inconsistencies at running back? What would you say, Bo Brock? What do you think the Cardinals believe it is and what do you believe it is? I, mean, I think it's just a uh, lack, lack of execution. It's just guys not making plays when they make plays. I mean, but at the same token, I mean, they're putting themselves at least early in the game, third and long, you know, whether it's a penalty or a negative play, you know, they're shooting themselves in the foot and they're not putting themselves in a position to be successful. I mean, the, the three and outs, the first quarter was atrocious for this game. They dug themselves into another early hole. They're down 13, nothing before you know it. And, uh, you know, they, they play well. You know, Vance Joseph's defense responded. They didn't give up a first first down, I think, since like 45 seconds in the first quarter after that. Uh, but it was just too little, too late. And the offense just, they didn't do their part today. You know, I know they attacked on a touchdown late in the game, but it was more on the offense and their inability to find the end zone all game long that kept them from a, dub, a potential dub. How frustrating is it for, for Kyler Murray to have to kind of play hero ball every game now? This team yeah. is not led at any point in regulation, right? Of course, they won in overtime last week. But, I mean, essentially, every time he takes the field, this team's down double digits. Is that weighing on him? Can you tell? Or is he kind of persevering? Are we seeing this new leader that Kyler Murray supposedly is? I, I think, obviously, he's, he's holding himself accountable. I, I, but I think he's searching for answers. I, I think he's searching for answers in the play calling. He's searching for answers in the execution. He said today, you know, as far as some of the big drops that this team had, or just balls that should have been caught that weren't, uh, that guys have to be awake. And that was interesting. That stood out to me. you got to be awake when you play with him. That's a quote from Kyler Murray. You can see it on my Twitter. I mean, it's, it's guys when he's improvising, and that's part of – the, their offensive scheme is him kind of going out there and playing a little bit of jazz and guys not being, you know, awake with him and, and making plays when he scrambles outside, you know, the Zach Kurtz is the A.J. Greens. Uh, guys just aren't making plays uh, to move the chains or find their way into the end zone. I mean, outside of Hollywood Brown and Greg Dortch, this, this offense was stagnant today. Do you think, you know, from your perspective – Obviously, the Cardinals were able to get into the red zone several opportunities to get touchdowns, but they came through with field goals instead. Um, the creativity aspect and just the overall uh, uh, approach by Cliff and his offense for now year four under him, um, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like we've kind of hit a ceiling as to in terms of knowing what you're going to get from Cliff, or is there another level that he could possibly go? Because from my perspective, if he doesn't get any better – uh, the Cardinals aren't going to go very far. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It's a good question because, I mean, I felt like this offense was the most creative when we saw Colt McCoy in here. It's like, why Why is that the reason? You know, like they were doing so many different things and they're getting the ball in the different playmakers' hands. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, th I think like Vance Joseph said last week where their shortcomings on defense are sometimes based on their personnel and who's available and who's not. And they've got a lot of that with, in the receiving room right now. I mean, outside of Dorch and – and Hollywood Brown, in three games in his offense, there aren't guys that you can, one, rely upon, and guys who are available. So, you know, I think that as far as creatively, he is limited a little bit with who's available. But, I mean, when you have Kyler Murray in his fourth year of the offense, you should be able to open it up as much as possible. And we're not, we're not seeing that. They, they definitely are going to have to get creative. And they're going to have to get creative fast because I think we saw a Carolina team today that was able to play some defense. And uh, you got to show up. 12 points doesn't beat anybody in the NFL. And the Arizona Cardinals, they figure out offensively. Uh, on defense, real quick. On yeah. defense, um, obviously, Isaiah and Zavin. Zavin got injured, I think, with, with the ribs. Yeah. And then Isaiah Simmons didn't really play half of the snaps, it seemed like. But... Uh, one guy that the chat is asking about is uh, Trayvon Mullins. Uh, you know, uh, he didn't really see the field much uh, in terms of the secondary. Like, what's the status on him, and, and did you hear anything about him before or after the game? It's more frustration. You would have to watch, like, pay close attention on special teams. That's when he saw the field today. So he did play. He wasn't in, I mean, we saw Jace Whitaker out there, and we saw Jace Whitaker have a tough game today for the Cardinals. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, this is, a, this is a coaching staff that's reluctant to play with rookies, 
They were reluctant to play guys who aren't like big name talent uh, based on do they trust them or not. And they don't seem to trust them. I mean, what they've said about Mo in the last couple of weeks is physically he's there, but mentally he's still trying to catch up and, and play the system that we were told, you know, was part of the reason they acquired him because his skill set fits the system so well, but we haven't seen him playing it once at this point. We'll have to look at the snap count. Maybe there's one that we weren't paying close attention to. But yeah, David Collins, the shoulder. Uh, I saw Richard Lawrence in, uh, with a cast on his on his hand. So that's not good news for a guy who's in the interior of this defensive line that just played well. So uh, yeah, it's this defense that was already dealing with personnel issues is, is, that continues. They're going in relatively healthy today. Rams a little bit more physical than the Raiders, and, and they're coming out with uh, licking their wounds a little bit. The receiving core, Bo, I think is something that deserves, you know, speculation, how they're going to survive the next one to two weeks. You've got no DeAndre Hopkins. We know that. But you're talking about Andre Bocelli getting snaps. Andy Isabella was horrifically bad again. Isn't Andre Bocelli an uh, opera singer? Yeah, yeah, he could be. And then AJ, yeah. AJ Green looks <laughs> like I mean, an angel. Yes. <laughs> AJ Green goes down with a knee. What's his status? Yeah. And how do you piece together this receiving core? And why the hell is Trey McBride not catching passes right now? Yeah, I, as far as AJ Green, Cliff didn't really have an update as far as his status going forward. Well, that's something we're going to have to follow throughout the week of practice this week. Uh, Kyler, uh, Hollywood Brown, who we talked to today, Cliff Kingsbury, they seem to think that there are enough guys in there. Frank Sanders, you might be able to kind of maybe shed some light on what you think about this receiving core outside of the big names, but it's like it's Hollywood Brown and it's Greg Dorch. Those are the guys who've been making plays. Those are the guys who are available. Uh, you need Zach Ertz, I think, to step up. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't envision them going outside and, and making a move. I mean, they might elevate a guy like Javon Wims from the practice squad. But, yeah, it's, 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 not a, it's not a good spot. And we still have, you know, three more weeks before DeAndre Hopkins allegedly is going to come play save the day. It's frustrating. Bo Brock live from State Farm Stadium. I want to remind everybody, DraftKings is where you need to be. New customers can bet just $5 on any team to win, get $200 in free bets instantly. If that's not enough, everyone can boost their winnings with DraftKings. Step up, same game, parlays. It's fantastic. And guess what? You can do it every Sunday of the NFL season. Same game, parlays. Again, on the DraftKings Sportsbook app, it's simple, folks. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use that promo code PHNX. That's promo code PHNX at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See those show notes for details. We've got our DraftKings king of the game, and who else would it be? Of course, it is Mr. Hollywood Brown. 14 catches, a buck 40 through the air. No touchdown, but he was fantastic when this team needed him. Moved the chains, just missed a deep bomb uh, in the third quarter. Listen, a lot from this offseason has not gone according to plan, but I believe the acquisition of Hollywood Brown for a first-round pick. Uh, nice little coup from Steve Keim there for our week three DraftKings. He actually played. He did. King of the play, yeah. king of the game, king of the playing field. Uh, sh should the Cardinals maybe think about f them picks, Bo Brock? I mean, listen, oh, there are, there are some teams that are going to fall out of it pretty soon. Hopefully, it's not the Cardinals. And if I'm Steve Kime, I got two third round picks next year to spend. I need some help. I need some help at defensive tackle. Maybe I need some help at pass rusher. I don't know. I don't think they trade for a wide receiver. But uh, it, when is too soon to be able to say, hey, we've got a, a personnel issue because. We're at the quarter mark next week, and uh, when you when you start waving the white flag in terms of the guys who aren't winning for them now and maybe some exterior options. Well, you have to also take into consideration now just how they're approaching Trayvon Mullen and some of the guys that they've added to this roster who have been playing sparingly. Like, who will they acquire that they will actually play? I mean, that is a big problem with this. Think about how ridiculous that statement is, too. Like, it, I, draft I picks, high draft picks, free agents, and mm -hmm. they won't play them. Right. Right. So, I, I mean, you could look at the, the pass rush position. It seems like it's a, it's a position that you can you know what your role is and you can go out there and you can just fixate on and get after the opposing quarterback. But, no, I mean, I, I, I think you have to be encouraged with how the defense played today, right? I mean, they, they came out, obviously, spot them 13 points could have been way worse. And then they were able to kind of get this team to a position where they could get back in the game. I, I have no problem with where this defense is. We'll see what they have to do, what they're doing with injury wise. You know, is they even going to be available? You know, what's the middle linebacker position look like going forward? Um, but man, I mean, it, I, I just don't know what, if this team just kind of holds serve for the next week and just focuses on beating Carolina because <laughs> you really can't. 
You can't even do anything if you can't beat Carolina. Uh, what I'm are you sorry. laughing at? I'm, <laughs> I'm re- laughing at Han Sagan's comment. This is kind pays old white guys ten to fifteen million because their wife is from Mesa. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funniest shit I've seen all year. <laughs> uh, oh man, uh, what's up, Frank Sanders? Hey, Bo, real quick, the uh, the men, the I always ask about the locker room and the mentality when the guys got ready to leave. Was there anything that you kind of saw out of the locker room? Their mentality was it like on a scale of one to ten, they were pissed, um, or they yeah. was kind of making more of the excuses that because our guys aren't here. And we don't have our full set of we don't have our full set of players. This is the reason why we're not playing our best football. It was disgust. They felt you could kind of feel it in that locker room. We talked to Hollywood Brown. You know, probably the, the lone bright side is you guys put up the stats of king of the game. But he said he felt terrible having that and getting 14 catches for 140 yards. He felt terrible because it was in a loss and that they weren't able to execute where it mattered in the red zone. So you like to hear that, right? You like to yep. hear Kyler Murray frustrated. Uh, but, you know, I think with this team, you can you can see and hear these guys kind of uh, be upset with this, but you want to see better execution at some point. It has to happen. Otherwise, you know, what are they doing? I mean, they, they, need, they need to just play better, especially on the offensive side of the football. It's frustrating, uh, JC in the chat. Leave Mesa alone, bro. Hey, listen, <laughs> we, we love Mesa. We love all parts of the East Valley here in Phoenix. We also love uh, Liquid Death. It's not beer. It's actually mountain spring water from the Alps. Liquid Death. Why is it called Liquid Death? Well, because it will brutally murder your thirst and uh, you're, you're infinitely recyclable. <laughs> it, really it does. It does, say, the, it does say that it on the says, read. It says it on the can. They oh also donate God. 10% of their profits. This is important. Um, from every can sold to help kill plastic production. Listen, pop open a liquid death, hydrate. We'll get ready for next week. Get free shipping on all water and merch at liquiddeath.com slash phnx. That's liquiddeath.com slash phnx or find liquid death at your local Target, Fries, Sprouts. Um, none of those places are in Maricopa, so I have to buy my liquid death in, in Phoenix. But uh, Bo Brock, uh, we were talking before you jumped on about Cliff Kingsbury and his maturation process as not only an offensive play caller, but as a head coach. Saul Bookman is on the record officially saying that he believes Cliff's reached the ceiling and that he may or probably is not the guy. What is your assessment of Cliff Kingsbury now, three seasons and three games into his NFL career with the Arizona Cardinals? Man, uh, I mean, that's a, that's a statement when he's, he's locked up through 2027 and, you know, he's coming off an 11 win playoff performance. Nobody's locked up any, uh, ever. Nobody's Michael Bill's got private hey, jet money. He's got hey, dead money for a head coach. I, I understand how, how the NFL would you works, Would you pay a buyout if you feel like this team isn't going anywhere? At what point? Not during the season. That's certainly not going to happen. I mean, and, and who do you elevate, like, in the meantime? In well, the we talked about that. It'd be after the season. After the season, yeah. for sure. And then who's the guy that's going to come and actually get what you want from this franchise quarterback? Who's going to be the guy that, that's going to unlock that uh, untapped potential? Oh, multiple people have already said it a million times. And we actually speculated it about last year yeah. when Sean Payton took the year off. If there's uh, anybody out there... That'd be the guy. Well, and he'd have to come here without Steve Kime. I mean, like, if the Cardinals fire Cliff Kingsbury, they have to fire Steve Kime as well. You would have to gut everything and just prop Kyler Murray up and say, you come here, you got a franchise quarterback. But Uh, I don't... I just don't think that's happening. (laughs) I I don't think that... And I'm not saying that from a personal... What would it take, Bo Brock, in your opinion? That's what people want to know. What would it take in 2022 for the Cardinals, and I still think they're a playoff team, a fringe playoff team, nine or ten wins, is it, is it missing the playoffs? Is it six yeah. wins, seven wins? And the reason why we're going down this road is because on multiple yeah. occasions today, Johnny has been like, oh, you got to fire <laughs> you got to fire Josh McDaniel after game three. Josh McDaniel you got, he's got to go. By my you got to fire, you know, Sean McVay. Oh, you got to show, like, he's named like half the coaches Josh, in the league that I, should I get said, fired after I today. I said Josh McDaniels might get fired. <laughs> Tom Brady should be sad. He's 0-3. <laughs> I, said if Matt, I said if Matt Rule had lost today, he would have been fired. What would it take for Cliff Kingsbury to, to be fired? Uh, let's see, like six and eleven, and this offense just never finds itself the entire season. I think that's like a great it, point. No, if it, if the it, offense I mean, looks like garbage all year with 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 and without Hopkins, then you you don't have built-in excuses, right? 
Right, right. And look, I, I understand the frustration. I'm not going to sit here and just say, and blow smoke and say, hey, he's, he's a slam dunk. This is the guy you move forward with. I understand the people that are skeptical as far as him being able to take that next step. Uh, but, you know, until he really proves that he can't, you know, take this team to where it wants to go, I mean, so far all he's done is, is succeed and get better from the previous season. This is like the first hiccup so far out of the gates at one and two, and that, you got to keep that in perspective. I mean, we're three weeks in. You don't have wide receiver one. You're incorporating the guy who's, uh, you know, taking over that role. In the meantime, you really don't have a red zone threat right now, and your defense was in flux for, you know, it's been in flux for far too often. So it's, it's just been – a grind for the first three weeks. And I think organizationally, I don't think anybody is perfect at this point, including their franchise quarterback. I mean, this, this team just needs to figure it out. And, you know, three weeks is definitely not a finished product. This is a marathon season. Frank Sanders knows that for sure, that you can kind of catch lightning in a bottle and they have an opportunity in their schedule later that if they're falling short against teams like Carolina or, or down the stretch against Seattle, then, then you can say, hey, if you're not beating the teams that should be, you know, bunnies, then, then we've got some big time problems. But we're the team is right now 0 and 8 at home. Um, and I, we were not at the, we were, we were not at the stadium. And I just wonder what the crowd kind of looked like to you when, while, while you were there. Did it look like it was more Ray, Rams fans or was it more our fans? Oh. And it just kind of was open. Or was it was it a good crowd there considering where right. our record has been? It was an electric atmosphere. I mean, sure, they, they obviously came out just. It was a pathetic start, you know, 13 nothing. not the crowd. I mean, this place was jumping. They introduced the defense. The defense came out. They looked like they were ready to run through a brick wall, every, each and every one of them. Like, it, it was like it parlayed our little tailgate at the Lola over here at State Farm Stadium. I mean, everybody was ready to roll, and they were feeling the momentum from that uh, from that second half against the Raiders. And they just – they pretty much they, – they killed all momentum that they had with their start. It was – I mean, they scored as many touchdowns as Tyler Murray wore shorts, shirts today. Zero. So I, I think that the, the Cardinals, they, they, they got to figure out, you know, who, who's the real team? Is it the team that struggled for 11 quarters or is it the team that had, you know, two se- successful quarters? Where I would push back on that, though, is like, is this a continuation of what we saw at the end of last year? And again, I don't – different players, yeah. different team, but same coaching staff, same core group of players. Uh, I think that's where the fan base is frustrated, like – I get it. You don't want to look back to 2021-2022. Cardinals have lost three straight to the Rams now. A couple of them haven't been overly competitive, right? And then you think about how poor Cliff Kingsbury is historically at the end of the year. Like, it, it, we want to believe it will change this year, but there's no reason that in, in revisionist history it will, given Cliff's time at Texas Tech and, and in the NFL. Joel says it is a continuation, Johnny. It's obvious. I, You know, I... I think this team, Bo Brock, we mentioned it, has its best football still to be played. But at the same yeah. time, you know, at what point, again, I think about Zayvon Collins potentially being injured, Rashard Lawrence, like do you start getting aggressive and looking for outside help? Because, I, again, there are some positions right now that are just not being fixed by internal players. Yeah, you, you always have to improve your roster. I mean, we've seen that. You saw what the Rams were able to do last year, and, and you have to be aggressive. Uh, I Look, I mean, this, this team, it's I, – man, I, I don't know. I, I think that as far as – I completely lost my train of thought. Somebody was right behind me talking. You're you fine. You're <laughs> fine. Hey, while, while Bo's gathering himself, why don't you gather yourself to go phnx.com, become a member – for the entire year, just under 60 bucks. And let me tell you what that's going to get you. A free shirt from the PHNX Merchandise Locker. And hey, maybe this is what the Cardinals need to win. You sporting some PHNX gear at State Farm Stadium. Check out this Hollywood Hills t-shirt on Camelback Mountain. Hey, not so coincidentally, Hollywood Brown had 14 catches, 140 yards. Check out this Hollywood Hills t-shirt on Camelback. Right now, it's the new hottest relief release at the PHNX Merchandise Locker. We've got this t-shirt. We've got... This T-shirt, the Touchdown Buddha Baby Yoda Celebration T-shirt, fan flipping tastic. Sport these at State Farm Stadium, and maybe we can get some good mojo for the Arizona Cardinals again. Under sixty bucks is going to copy one of those T-shirts for free, as well as a year-long membership at gophnx.com. All right, gentlemen, final thoughts. I'll begin with you, Saul Bookman, about today and how the Cardinals move forward. <clears throat> it's not the end of the world. I don't like uh, the potential ceiling that we have at the head coaching position. Yep. 
Um, but I think things can be cleaned up on the offensive side, at least, to get you into the end zone. Uh, you just got to tread water for two, three more weeks um, and, and then get D-Hop back, get some, you know, hopefully you get Rondell Moore back, and then all of a sudden this offense is scoring 35 points a game or more. You know, so that's that's the hope. I'm not worried. I will be worried if we don't perform well against the Panthers and especially win against the Panthers next week. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 far too early for that. And also, uh, no OBJ to the Cardinals. We don't need him. <laughs> <laughs> I like your idea of blocking him from the Rams. But Frank Sanders, what say you? Uh, there were several players that came ready to play. Not all not all 22 guys, whether it be offense or defense, 11 on offense, 11 on defense, came ready to play. Offensive, who came ready to play? Hollywood Brown, he wanted to meet the challenge of a Jalen Ramsey. He was excited. You could see the jaw jack and the talking back and forth. Gregory Dort showed up ready to play. You can tell it. Kyler, I thought Kyler was ready to play. He was ready to meet up, meet the meet, <clears throat> meet and deal with and serve up a nice kicking of a butt whooping to to them and make sure that Aaron Donald went home with an L on his chest, but it just did not happen. Um, I think a couple guys on defense was ready to play. I think JJ was ready to play. Could he give us four full four quarters? I didn't I didn't see that, but those are the guys that everyone needs to be talking to now. Those guys need to talk to other guys about being ready to play and dominate and dogging your other your your opponent on every level and every facet. And that that mentality will get that mentality will let those guys realize, man, this is this is this is not this not preseason. Yeah, this is competition. They want to kick your butt. You're not friends. I don't care what whatever you did. We're not friends. Right now, this is time to play football. And a couple guys came ready to play. To face the Super Bowl champions, and they want and they want to display that. Not everybody came ready to play, and I think they need to figure that out. We need the best version of Cliff Kingsbury next week. Like none of this kind of going through the motions. You can't start slow like you have been. It seems like ages since this team has scored a first possession touchdown. I mean, good hell. I thought creativity with the run game wasn't there. Kyler Murray wasn't moving around enough. Cliff, this is a big week for you, man. Like you cannot start one and three and lose a game at Carolina to Matt Rule, who could potentially be fired at any point during this season. So I, I, I think Cliff Kingsbury is under immense pressure. Listen, I, I'm not the biggest Vince Joseph fan right now, but to Bo's point, he held the po held the opposing team to 20 points. It's up to Cliff Kingsbury now. Put on your big boy pants, figure your shit out. We've seen you do it, whether it be last year in Cleveland with your game plan when you had COVID. At Seattle, at San Francisco with Colt McCoy and getting those wins. I need that Cliff Kingsbury a week from today. I need all of you right now to like and subscribe to the PHNX Cardinals podcast. Like this video right now. Subscribe to the PHNX Sports channel on YouTube. For Bo Brock, live at State Farm Stadium, Saul Bookman, the great Frank Sanders, I'm Johnny Venerable. We're back tomorrow. Have Everybody have a great rest of your weekend. We will see you manana. Peace. Thank <music> you.